Today on the No City on the Sideline Dad Podcast, my interview with dad, podcaster, and co-founder of Podcast Movement, Jared Easley. Also, I have a little challenge for you, and I need your help. Next on the podcast. Welcome to the No Sitting on the Sideline Dad Podcast, a podcast about a journey of discovery and conversations about not sitting on the sideline of life. Let's get involved. Here's host Joe Foley. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, my name is Joe Foley. I'm the host. And I really want to say thank you for being here. I know it's a crazy busy day on a parent or a busy person. Our time is limited, so you choose to spend time listening. That does mean a lot. And this is your first time to listen to this podcast. Welcome. This is the podcast about having a conversation about being a dad, mom, and a crazy busy person. I want this podcast to have a sense of community. What I mean by that sense of community is being able to talk to you. There'll be interviews and topics, discussions about stuff we all deal with. We're all going through the same same issues. Similar, I would never say same, but similar. I love being a dad. And I know the dads that have parents stuff. Not easy. I'm on a journey. I'm not an expert. Just a dad. Just a dad. Trying to take one day at a time in this crazy world. Learning. The funny thing. Learning the things that's fun. And helping you grow as a person, a parent, means something to me. I also really enjoy connecting with you. This is why I do the podcast. It's me to connect with you. So please reach out to me. My contact is no city on the sideline dot com slash contact. What is what is no sitting on the sideline dad podcast about? It's about getting involved in, in life. I think about it. Being alone in life. It's about I think about not learning or getting involved in, in new things. Life becomes stale and boring. Life is short. Time goes by so fast. A good example. My son's going to be four in a few weeks. And wow, time has gone by fast. And I really enjoy being his dad and parent and spending time with him. Especially since going being a new dad was recently divorced. Time is precious to me. I give you an example of something we do together just recently. Instead of buying things, I like doing experiences. We went to Castle Island in Boston. It's an island right at the entrance of the Boston Harbor. It's a great fort, great place to walk around. Plenty of places for picnic. He really enjoyed playing on the playground. There's a lot of ships leaving the harbor and boats coming in out. It's funny you say that. The other when I was there, I had a father, his eyes were bugging out. I was looking my my vision was towards Boston, like inner Boston Harbor. And I couldn't really see behind me. And I knew there were cargo ships and, and freighters coming in and out. I'm look, watching Sean, all of a sudden I see his eyes, his eyes, father's eyes grow bigger and bigger. I'm like, what? As I turn around, I can see this large freighter stacks and stacks and stacks of, of metal containers. I'm like, wow, this is the size of, of an Empire State Building. And my son's like, I'm like, Sean, look, 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 the big boat leave. Leaving the harbor, he's like, Dad, Dad, I just want to play the playground. I don't care about the boat. It's like a one-track mine. <laughs> so it was fun because I think a place to eat there, I think it was Sullivan's. And they had great, you know, typical stuff when, you know, fish, hamburgers, hot dogs, drinks. And it, it was fun. Me and him actually, it's kind of windy. He doesn't like the wind that much. Instead of eating our lunches because they had the outside tables, we sat in the back seat and had a great time watching the airplanes land because... Where Castle Island is, it's right near the Logan International Airport, and the airplanes are flying over, and they're like, hey, hey, Sean, look at that one. What color is that? And he's like, ha ha, daddy, it's blue, red, and yellow, or whatever the airplanes were. It was a fun, inexpensive way to spend time with my son, and I really enjoyed, because you know what? Time is important. What I want to do is the Fitbit Challenge, or Community what I want you to do is go to the show notes and click the link. The link is no sitting on the sideline.com slash fit challenge. 
This link will bring right to the page to join the group. This group is meant to encourage each other through our weight loss challenge. What I want to do is I want to foster a sense of community. We all need encouragement to reach our goals. And this this way I can connect and encourage you. And you encourage each other. There's no prize for this challenge. Just meet and help others in the community. And foster a sense of community. So see you there and looking forward to encouraging you and meeting you. Next up, my interview with Jared Easley from Star of the Dallas Podcast and Podcast Movement. There were a few things I liked about this about Jared in this interview. He's a very humble, humble and down to earth person. We talk about his journey as a dad and a podcaster, also a podcast movement. So let's jump right in. Today on the podcast, my guest, Jared Easley, he's a father, podcaster, host of Star of the Doubt podcast, and one of the co-founders of Podcast Movement. Welcome, Jared. Welcome to the podcast. Joe, I appreciate this. Thank you. Uh, one funny, uh, quick question, and, I, and I, I was following you on Facebook the other day, and I really want to know, what is a chicken joy? I seen that picture of you, <laughs> the Jolly Bean. I, I wanted to ask you, but in Facebook, in Facebook it's kind of weird. So I get you in person. I, I'm curious. I'm really curious. well. Okay, in fairness, I, I would not have been able to answer this question until last Saturday. Um, so anyway, I went for the first time to a place called Jolly Bee. Uh, Jolly Bee, for most of your listeners, is probably going to be something they don't even know about unless they're out in uh, the West Coast. You'll see a few of them in California. You might see one in Vegas. It's a uh, fast food chain that started in the Philippines, and my wife is Filipino, so people that are from the Philippines, they know about Jollibee, and Jollibee is not really that amazing, but because it's kind of a Filipino thing, for the Filipino community, they know about it, and they, you know, they'll, they'll talk about it, and it's had some moderate success here in the United States, or it's starting to, so it's, it's kind of a... a kind of a fun thing to check out so there was one that opened in jacksonville florida we happened to be in jacksonville that weekend i thought well that would be a fun thing uh to take my daughter to you know go to jolly bee that would be kind of the the fun talk <laughs> within the the filipino family you know that side of the family you know, just tell everybody hey we went to jolly bee so we did and they have chicken joy which <laughs> uh i don't even know what that is actually that, that's really just i think that's uh what they call chicken. It was regular chicken. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know why they, they, you know, it's joy because, you know, you're, you're hanging out with family, having chicken, I guess. But, um, yeah, it, it is a unique experience. If you get a chance to go, why not? Go ahead. Well, it was just funny. Cause I saw on the background, I'm like, Oh, chicken joy. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I was kind of wondering, you know, that, in fairness, there was a line wrapped around that building to get in this place. So it's not like it was a joke. I mean, it was, it was a real deal. People were, Excited about their jolly bees, so good for them. Well, I'm up here and um, I work in Massachusetts, and right near my work, they have been the first Sonic ever in in the area. Uh, it was now uh, that's something to get excited about. Oh, tater tots, definitely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we had a traffic literally like five miles down the road, wrapped around the street, and I usually once a week I work out of work at seven o'clock, and I'm like laughing mm. at these people because. They're just waiting in line for a burger and tater tots. I'm like, it has to be that good. <laughs> well, rightfully so, man. I, I'm glad to hear that, that Sonic is doing well. And it's been a long time since I've been to a Sonic. I kind of take those for granted because I grew up around them. But you're right. Uh, all, once in a blue moon, Sonic's a good thing. <laughs> well, what you have a daughter. Um, I see a lot of pictures of her. What is the funniest situation you've been in with your daughter? Because, <laughs> oh, you know, there's always always something. Uh, <laughs> You know, you put me on the spot like that, like, oh, what do you say? Um, it's just funny things like. And we went to the Dairy Queen. His favorite song now is Footloose. And, he, <laughs> yep. and he's trying to rehearse. I, I think I'm watching like Dance Fever and he's singing Footloose, dancing in the middle and everybody's around going, Footloose. And he's singing and I'm like, Sean, stop, Sean, stop, Sean. <laughs> what are you doing, daddy? It's okay. Oh, look at the cake over there, the ice cream cake. It looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Man, sometimes you gotta let them just sing Footloose. I guess they're, 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 there's worse songs that they could be singing. Oh yeah, especially so. when you when you playing a song on the radio in the car and you're like, oh, that's not a bad song, and they draw off the <laughs> a couple of fannies like, oh no, you didn't hear that bad word, bad word. He's like, Daddy, what's a bad word? I'm like, never mind, you don't need to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think most parents listening will relate to that for sure. One thing I know you're into, um, you're 
your podcast, and you're also a podcaster too. And and how do mm-hmm. how do you get involved in podcasting? I listened to them first, and I, I was a fan. Like even when podcasting was fairly new, uh, several years back, I remember I watched the TV show Lost, and I really, really was into that TV show. And I found a podcast that was made by the producers, the executive producers of Lost. They had a podcast. And so I would listen to that show whenever they come out with a new episode. And I loved it. And then for a few years, I kind of uh, fell out of podcasting. And then I was having a conversation with Chris Murphy. He's a good friend of mine. lives in uh, Franklin, Tennessee. This was several years back. And I was kind of discouraged with the day job. And uh, we were having dinner one night. This was in Orlando. He tells me, hey, there's these two guys out in Utah that talk about how to create a business online and <laughs> on this podcast. And I, I my ears perked up and I was like, oh, this is interesting. So I started listening to that podcast, which uh, turned me on to several other business type podcasts. And probably after two years of, of consuming, 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 I decided, you know, it'd be kind of fun to have my own show and learn from folks that I look up to. And at the time, I wasn't interested in writing as much. Uh, blogging didn't interest me, but I did enjoy talking to people. And and uh, so I started a podcast over four years ago, and it's been um, steady for those four years. I've consistently put out the show. I don't pretend that the show is this massive podcast that everybody knows it's not, but it's something that I've really enjoyed, and I've made a lot of connections through it, and I will continue to do it if for no other reason because I, I like making new friends and meeting new people that's a that's a funny thing you say that that's the one of the reasons i do it. i like it like when you go in your stats i don't look at the stats i just look on the map where everybody where everybody's listening to and i'm like and i told my boss i'm like mm-hmm. hey like somebody listens to siberia i'm like that is awesome <laughs> it's true <laughs> yeah oh no i I'll, I'll get an email randomly every now and then from somebody uh from like uganda or singapore or something that listens to the show and Asking me about a joke that was made on the podcast, like I don't get the joke. What was that about? <laughs> you know, sometimes you forget. You know, there are people out there that are checking this out. So it's a great, great medium. I mean, I think I'm teaching mm-hmm. like 40 people in France English, and the learning for me, it's kind of get kind of interesting. I'm like, yeah, I'm probably the interesting person in English for me <laughs> when I'm dropping my eyes, you know, in my Boston accent and stuff like that. <laughs> They're going to be looking up Sonic. What is that? <laughs> yep. What is um, so you live in Orlando, Florida? So you must go to Disney World all the time. I wouldn't say all the time, but um, I actually used to live in Orlando. I, now I live in South Florida. My wife's from here, and so we're we're about three hours away. My sister lives in Orlando. We go and visit them frequently, and and I would say when we get a chance to go to Disney, you know, we try to do it because Disney's amazing, but uh, not as often as you know probably should or could. But man, it's a great place, and people should go there for sure. So you said you make a lot of interesting connections, and, and I, I got about your podcast too, and um, I love the music. I, I love the music. It's like get you right in the beat when you're driving home, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Jared's on. It's good. Now, um, interesting. You're a podcast. You listen to podcasts. How many podcasts mm-hmm. do you have in your phone right now? Ooh, uh, probably about ten. Too many. <laughs> um, I I try not to overwhelm myself. But I, I've, I've met a number of podcasters recently, and I'll subscribe to their show uh, to check it out. And, you know, that's kind of the nice thing to do when you're talking to other podcasters is check out their show. So I've done that recently. And, and these are shows that I'm not necessarily going to stick around and listen to long term. And I'm pretty sure those folks know that. But it's more of a courtesy. Uh, check it out. You know, maybe give some feedback or leave a review. That said, uh, some of my favorite podcasts right now. <laughs> It's funny, I was dogging on my, my daughter liking wrestling, but there's a wrestling podcast that I listen to that I really like. It's called Something to Wrestle With, <laughs> and uh, that show is really interesting. Even if you're not a wrestling fan, it's interesting to listen to it, how they do their ads mm-hmm. and how they um, interact with their audience um, to uh, do calls to action and things like that. And so I would encourage people to check it out, if for no other reason, just to hear how they do certain things how they do their transitions, um, how they uh, lay out the show, how they organize it, how they um, – it, it's really fascinating. Now, the topic to me is also interesting, which keeps me hooked and, and listening, but it, it's a good layout and a good formula. So they have a pretty interesting show. It's interesting. My, my phone probably – I'll say it's over 50. Um, mm-hmm. And um, the only reason why I do that is I took my talk show radio, my talk show away, and they've turned it yeah. into rap, so I need – 
I needed something to listen to because I took me into rap and I, I don't really like rap. So, I mean, no offense to anybody who listens to rap, but <laughs> yeah. uh, you took my talk show away. So that's why I listen to podcasts. And, it, it, <laughs> <laughs> and my, my first one was um, Michael Hyatt. And um, yes. I listened to him and all of a sudden, oh, I can do a blog. And next thing I know, mm-hmm. I can do a podcast. And I'm like, oh, man, you guys got me hooked. Yeah. Yeah, definitely Michael Hyatt was one of those people that encouraged me and inspired me several years back. And, you know, it's uh, fun. I, I appreciate people like Michael Hyatt for that reason, because now I'm doing something that I really enjoy and has had a positive impact in my life, you know, being a, a podcaster. What did you do for work before you became a part, like before you got involved in all the stuff you do now? <laughs> I was a project manager uh, working for a software company. And I remember... I, I worked really hard there, did a reasonable job. You know, I wasn't perfect, but I, I certainly tried to do well. It's a funny story I don't really talk about often, but um, they found out, meaning my boss, found out I had a podcast. And, you know, I, I would think in most situations that wouldn't be a big deal because I was doing, you know, the things I needed to do at work. But it really upset this lady. <laughs> she She tried to write me up for having a podcast. Uh, and I, uh, how can you write someone up for having a hobby on the, you know, outside of work? And, and it, it, it really like, uh, didn't sit well with me at all, Joe. And, 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 you know, things played out several months later. I ended up getting let go with like 10 other people right before Christmas, which that was wonderful. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's one of those things where I remember thinking, should I not do this? Is this, you know, rocking the boat? Is it worth it? And I remember thinking, oh, I'm going to keep doing this. This is a good thing. It's not, you know, I'm not heart hurting anybody. I'm not doing anything wrong. And sometimes people will look at your, you know, your hobbies or what you're interested in. And they won't share those same uh, thoughts. <laughs> and, you know, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. So, yeah. How'd you come up with the title, Star of the Doubts? I was just curious. Yeah. Um, I need to star some doubts. Pretty much every day, um, I'm constantly uh, limiting my beliefs and things. And there's times that, that makes sense, and there's times when you need to suck it up and you know make some moves. But when I was younger, I had a, a successful businessman in my family, and he was helping me out. And he shared something with me that stuck with me. He said, "There's three things that you want to do to be successful. One of them being you know treat others the way they want to be treated." and the second is always do your best. And the third is starve the doubts. And at 18, I, I didn't really understand starve the doubts. That sounded like kind of a cheesy motivational line. But as I've uh, progressed and had some life experience, I realized, you know, that that's actually a really good thing to think about is, um, you know, I want to get on this long talk about mindset and stuff. But, uh, you know, there are times when you need to pause and think through things. And there's other times when you need to uh, make strategic steps and, I've uh, I, ba- I I try to balance that, and this show is a constant reminder. My show being started out, it reminds me of of those things and how to uh, think through circumstances. And I would say one of the outcomes of doing this show for four years is things I used to worry about or things that used to make me anxious don't really work on me anymore. Like I, I would, I'd say I'm a lot more relaxed and less <laughs> uh, less worried. And sometimes it drives my wife crazy, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I think after, you know, doing the show for a number of years, I've kind of realized, Hey, some things aren't, aren't worth getting too freaked out about. <laughs> so, anyway, I had a, a quick question about, um, you know, since you've been on for four years and then you've all been podcast moving and stuff like that. Do it, it, is it weird when people come up to you now? Like, Hey, you're the, you're Jared easily. Yeah, actually that like, I, I try to treat everybody the same way. And I, I don't pretend for a second I'm some podcast celebrity or anything, but you know there there are times when things like that happen. I, I went to a conference uh, several weeks back out in San Diego, and you know I was running into people, and th- they were familiar with me, and I didn't know who they were. And, um, you know, I just tried to treat them like I would anyone else, but I, I don't pretend you know that I'm high and mighty or doing something greater than anybody else. So you know I'm thankful to have opportunities and take advantage of them, but. Um, you know, I, I guess I got a, a very limited taste of what some of these internet celebrities <laughs> go through. Um, someone like a, like a name like Pat Flynn, which people may know or may not, he, uh, will go to these events and he'll get bombarded and <laughs> everybody, everybody's excited to see him. And, 
you know, I kind of on on a much smaller level, I can I guess sympathize with what that what that is like for them. But uh, yeah, for me, for the most part, nobody really cares. I'm I'm just Jared. <laughs> so it's funny. It's um, last a couple, last year I went to um, podcast Mid Atlantic. It was it was down in New Jersey, and in, in the oh yeah, it was the first time that I I follow Dave Jackson a lot on his podcast. And it was yes. the first time to see him in person. I'm like, that's the Dave Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> He's great. And um, I had to mention about his cat, too. So it was kind of weird to see people that I do follow and, and have a conversation with another podcaster. And I'm like, and uh, how's Bernie? You know, so <laughs> it was a, it was a, it was an interesting experience. And um, one thing I, I just want to talk about you as a podcast. And, and it seems like every podcaster I went to the, the conference last year and was my first big conference. Um, and it was like Every pot it was like a big family reunion. It was like a big family there. I mean, everybody's like looking out for each other, and it was a weird, it was a weird and a cool experience at the same time because I'm not used to that in conferences. I don't know if that um, have you ever experienced that as a podcaster? Oh yeah, I'd say the podcast community overall is, is generous. Um, you know, you got some bad apples, uh, but for the most part, people are are interested in helping each other out, and the community uh, certainly a podcast movement is like that. And, you know, we've gotten that compliment many, many times. And, you know, it's the conference is growing, I'm sure, as it continues to grow. Some of those dynamics will change a little bit because you'll have some different different groups uh, represented there. But um, I think at its core, you know, people who are in the trenches like you and I creating podcasts, we get it. And we know what it's like to, to kind of make the sacrifice, uh, resources and time and creativity and all the effort goes into doing a podcast i mean so you do have that unique connection with other podcasters and uh, in most cases that translates to a pretty cool synergy and uh, a spirit of collaboration which i think is pretty great uh, it was it is it's, it's definitely a really neat experience how did um how did podcast movement come about i was just curious because um i remember when you were doing the crowdfunding and i remember i was all excited and i, I um I remember helping out with the crowdfunding and i was <laughs> i was like oh this is awesome i'm, I'm definitely in and I was wondering, how do you guys come about po- podcast movement, actually? Well, so we attended another event called New Media Expo, which I don't believe it exists anymore. But um, at the time, that was kind of a big event where podcasters would consider going to. And it was um, along with alongside with people who were doing YouTube and bloggers. So podcasting was just kind of a, a track at that event. It wasn't the focus. But a majority of the attendees at that conference were podcasters. And I remember thinking, hey, there's something odd about, you know, most of the attendees are podcasters, but only a a small percentage of the content of the conference is for podcasters. And people were saying, why isn't there a podcast conference? And I remember kind of joking with my business partner, Dan, at the time, like, we, we should we should start a podcast conference. Ha ha. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Well, okay, well, if we're serious and we're going to start one, you know, how do we test that idea? And at the time, that was through a crowdfunding campaign. So we decided, well, we're not super well connected, but we do have friends that are podcasters. So let's start there. Let's reach out to some of those friends, see if they'll attend, see if they'll speak, see if they'll share it with their network. And let's do a crowdfunding campaign, see if people will support it. And we put the word out there and and we raised the support we needed to uh, kind of bootstrap it and we did the first year and we, we thought man it'd be incredible to get 200 people together and we had 600 wow. <laughs> come the first year wow. so yeah it was wild it was definitely uh that, that i don't think anything prepared us for that i mean it was just learning as we went you know trying to get advice from smart people but um you know we learned a lot from year one learned a lot from year two learned even more from this last year now we've got our fourth year coming up and you know, I don't pretend that we're pros at it, but we're we're definitely better than we were when we started out. And um, it is a good event if you're into podcasting or you're into that uh, community or want to learn more about it. You know, that's definitely a good thing to check out. What does it take? To, I'm just curious. I mean, I always hear a lot of the stories, and I hear a lot of them you on other interviews and stuff like that. But what does it take to run one of the things? It must you must be like running around like crazy. Well, it's a full time job, and and so. I don't pretend that podcast movement's my full time job. I mean, it is the responsibilities are full time, but I, you know, I have a full time job outside of that. 
And so it was uh, Dan Franks, who's my business partner. And we, <laughs> so there is, there's a lot of sacrifice that goes into the organization and the prep and the uh, effort <laughs> to do podcast movement. It is not a joke. It, it's a huge, huge uh, time suck and a lot of energy and uh, uh, certainly a, a labor of love. Uh, but I'll say the, the first two years that we, you know, took this on, we didn't make any money. And those two years were really tough. Joe, there was a lot of doubt. There was a lot of times when we, or I especially thought, man, maybe, maybe this isn't the right thing to do. <laughs> and uh, my spouse certainly thought that. And, uh, you know, just our instincts told us, no, let's, we have a good proof of concept. We need to just be patient. We need to take some, take some hits and keep getting up and, uh, we, we work through and learn from our mistakes. And, uh, so that's what it's like. I think when you take on anything creative and you're passionate about it, and especially if it's something like a business, you gotta, you gotta be in it for the long haul. Uh, some of the stuff you'll see online about these quick wins, maybe those happen, but for most people, they don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the people that seem to have some victory is the people that stick with it long, you know, a long time. And our, our culture, we celebrate success um but you know the the effort and the grind to get to that success is less celebrated nobody really likes to talk about that or focus on that and a good example of that's like the nfl draft that wasn't terribly long ago hmm. um you know you celebrate these guys that are you know getting on these teams or whatever but no one you know <laughs> where, where, where were those cameras years you know ago you know focusing on them building those fundamentals and lifting weights and you know, doing all the things that got them to a point where they, a team would want to draft them. You know, it, it was years and years of hard work, and you know, it wasn't it wasn't just because they're you know a certain size. Although I'm sure that plays into it, but you, you get what I'm saying. I yeah, mean, these I things it. take a lot of effort and a lot of time, and you got to really be focused and willing to <laughs> to, to just suck it up and go for it. You know, because if you're not, you you'll get discouraged and you might quit. Well, I noticed I, I'm like, I, I listened and I'm, I'm a follow you. Like I said, I follow on social media. I'm like, where in this country is Jared this week? Oh, like, you know, you're well, with, with San Diego and I knew you were, I know you were in a couple other conferences. Yeah. Conferences are something that I've, I try to, um, you know, make time for the ones that I think are, are relevant to what I'm up to or what I'm interested in. And then also I travel for my day job, which my wife doesn't always love that. <laughs> so, um, you know, I do enjoy travel, but not at the expense of, you know, causing my wife uh, stress or frustration. I hate being away from my daughter more than I need to. So um, so while I love travel, I also uh, try not to do it more than necessary, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, it does. I mean, I can understand being away from your, I mean, my, with my son. And I know a time with my son. I know, and when I get to see him, it's it's an amazing, I can't wait. I'm like, six days, I, I didn't see him for six days in a row. I'm like, oh, yeah, his vocabulary has changed, and he's grown like one inch. I'm like. What happened? Wow. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's, I can understand definitely being away from your, your child. It could be in a definitely, um, you know, it could bother you. Yeah. And there, there's days I've had arguments with my wife uh, where she's, you know, stressed out because me being gone caused extra work for her. And it's, it's one of those moments where it's like, man, I really wish podcast movement was uh, the full time gig. Where you know we wouldn't, you know we wouldn't be having this argument. We might have some other argument, but we'd be talking about this. <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I I just realized, man, you know, I'm doing what I can. And I, I think that's that's hopefully a takeaway from this show is, uh, regardless of what season you are in your life, you just be a good steward of the opportunities that are in front of you. With you know, families first, of course, and um, you know, work obligations, make those a priority, and then keep you know building on the side. You know, whatever dream you have in your heart, whatever. A hobby or, or whatever business or whatever thing you're wanting to do, you know, don't, don't give up on it. Just be responsible with what you have in front of you, do those things and then build on the side. And, you know, things, great things can happen if you're willing to do that consistently over time. And a lot of people, like we talked about, they get discouraged and they quit that my advice is, you know, just stick with it, stay the course and, you know, things can happen, but you got to be patient. And a lot of people aren't. What you just said was very good and, and, and totally helpful and, and, and good information to take away. Um, where they can find you, where they can get in touch with you and, on social media or on podcast movement, anything about podcast movement you want to share? Yeah, the fir first place to check out is your podcast. 
Uh, subscribe if you're not already. Stick around, listen to every episode of this show. And then if you run out of episodes and you need another podcast to check out, you can check out Star of the Doubt. That's a show that we were referencing earlier. And then if podcasting is something that you're interested in possibly doing, then podcastmovement.com is a, a conference that's happening in Anaheim, California this summer. Uh, we do it every year. It's going to be in Philadelphia in 2018. So, yeah, 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 my side of the country. So, yeah, um, I, I certainly would love to connect with anybody that wants to say hello. And uh, but I think at a bare minimum, keep listening to shows like Joe's and you're in a good place. That's a smart thing to do. Well, thank you, Jerry. Thank you on the podcast. I really appreciate it, buddy. Hey, my absolute pleasure. Thanks, Joe. Well, that's all I have this episode. I want to say thank you for joining me on the No Sitting on the Sideline Death podcast. You can find all the show notes for this episode over at nocityonthesideline.com slash 22. Please comment on the podcast. All comments help improve the podcast. I want to say thank you for Jared Easley for being a guest on this podcast. It was fun and a great time talking with him. It, it's fun to meet, connect with people who you admire online and on the podcast. You can also follow... And listen to Jared over at stylethedoubts.com. I really recommend this podcast because it's like you can listen to this conversation with Jared and his guests. And they're having a great time. You're learning something. Also, check out Podcast Movement. It's the big conference for the industry, the podcast industry. And if you're interested in podcasting, it's a great place and event to learn. It's a big conference. Also, please subscribe to the podcast in iTunes. Google Play and Stitcher, and any podcast or choice of you, of yours. Well, thank you for your time. Until next time, have fun, get involved in your children, and tell them you love them. Time is short. Every moment counts because things can change and change quickly. Until next time, take care. God bless. See ya. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Please subscribe to the newsletter to receive updates of the show and helpful and useful tips. This has been a production of Foley 42 Media.